Hi, I'm Amanda Johnson. I'm the Executive Director of the ASXL Rare Research Endowment Foundation, or the R Foundation. I am here to give you a quick update on our research roadmap, which is our strategic plan for research and partnerships. We started this process earlier this year with focus groups and a family survey uh, that helped provide some insight into what the research priorities of families are. We took that input from that survey and brought it to our in-person strategic planning meeting in July that was part of the ASXL Research Symposium and Family Conference in Los Angeles. At that meeting, we had representatives from all stakeholder groups within the ASXL community, including clinicians and doctors, uh, researchers, and family members from each of the three syndromes, boring opitz syndrome, shashi Pena syndrome, and Bainbridge-Roper syndrome. We were also fortunate to have some outside experts there with us as well to share their perspectives, uh, including a member of the pharmaceutical industry and several other people who have uh, expertise in other rare disorders. The meeting started with a landscape assessment by our friends at Combined Brain, which is a consortium group of other rare neurodevelopmental disorders and is led by uh, a person named Terry Jo Bischel, who is both a neuroscientist and uh, a person who has a child with another rare uh, developmental disorder. Um, so she was a great person to lead that meeting with both a foot in the, the parent camp and a foot in the science camp. Um, her team provided a landscape assessment, which included a literature review of existing medical and scientific literature about the three syndromes and their genes, uh, as well as a list of um, research uh, assets and resources that already exist. The landscape assessment also began to identify some of the gaps in uh, resources and knowledge that exist that we're going to have to try to fill through this research roadmap strategic plan. Following the landscape assessment, I presented the results of the family survey so that subsequent conversation was really focused in and grounded in the research priorities that had been identified by families through the focus group and survey process. Next, the group broke into three stations and everybody rotated through each of the three stations, which included basic research. So what are the basic mechanisms of the ASXL genes and their effects that we need to have a better understanding of to begin to make uh, scientific progress? Um, the next was preclinical trial readiness. So what are the um, resources and assets that we as a community need to have available to be attractive to pharmaceutical companies and other groups that may be interested in working with us in a clinical trial uh, if a therapy or drug becomes uh, a potential intervention for ASXL syndrome. So that's a good like thinking ahead part of uh, part of this work. And the last piece, the last breakout group was uh, clinical care and management. So what are the um, information and um, resources that families need to have available to ensure that their child is getting access to the best knowledge and the best care to ensure that they are living to their fullest potential? So coming out of the meeting, we have a list of ideas within the basic research, preclinical trial readiness, and care management uh, buckets, if you will, and uh, a list of which of those items are considered to be priorities within those areas. So one of our next steps is to take um, those priorities and begin to build them into a formal written strategic plan that includes a timeline, resources, cost, level of effort, um, and plot that out as a formal plan for us to work toward. There were a couple of items um, from that list that we have already begun to implement. Uh, the first was a request from the scientific community to meet on a more regular basis. So they have an opportunity to continue collaborations and sharing ideas in between the ASXL research symposia that happen annually in person. Um, so starting this week, actually, we launched what will be a quarterly virtual um, meetup for the uh, members of the research community to begin to share those ideas and we'll continue those going forward on a regular basis. The other idea um, is that, uh, and this will not come as a surprise to families, that we need to generate a better list of um, healthcare providers and doctors who have experience treating individuals with ASXL syndrome. So later this year, we will be launching a crowdsourcing effort to begin to gather names and contact information from families about who they are seeing, uh, who they would recommend to others and to begin to build that list. And that will serve as the foundation of several other priority items coming out of the research roadmap that involve building the clinical network. The other takeaway from this process so far is that it is going to take 
resources to implement these priorities um, and that the funds that are going to be required to help put this plan into place are gonna to have to come within our own community. So this is an open call to families to think about how you can be involved in fundraising, especially as we head into the end of the year to set us up to be ready to really put this plan into action as we head into 2023. So please be thinking about how you can get involved um, with uh, fundraising with friends and family through the end of the year. Opportunities include Shashi Pena Syndrome Awareness Day on October 6th, if you're part of that community, um, Giving Tuesday, the International Day of Giving, on November 29th and just general end of year uh, fundraising and um, being in touch with friends and family about supporting this work and being part of making progress for families living with ASXL syndromes. So thank you for your interest in this project and your continued engagement and we look forward to continuing to share updates as we make progress on our research roadmap. Thank you.